You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, getflywheel.com, and apps console. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next edition of the interview show. I'm Seth, your host. Um, with me today, we have Mohammed Ahmed of A Weber. He is the, e- I guess, the email czar, the email delivery czar over at, at A Weber. He's the person who makes the emails end up in the inbox, not the spam box. So I thought since A Weber is a sponsor, we would get some A Weber people on the show. And then I met Mohammed at the Ascend conference that A Weber put on. Was it three weeks ago, Mohammed? Yeah, two weeks ago, and you know, he talked about you know email delivery, and I was like, wow, I didn't know there's so much behind it. I just thought it was a crapshoot whether or not you get stuck in the spam box or not. So apparently, there's a whole science behind it, and obviously, we're not going to cover that in 20 minutes. But I figured I'd give it everyone's whistle, and then they can you know reach out to A Weber and sign up. By the way, if you want to sign up for A Weber, please go to our A Weber um, landing page, aweber.com/phillytech.org, all one word. Um, and sign up over there. Dollar for the first month, um, so worth trying out, seeing if it works for you. Also, we have we've you know we've had the Patreon campaign for a little while. Patreon dot com slash Philly Tech Org for a while. That's for people who want to support the ongoing support the network and help us grow. We really do need some help with the network. We have some great sponsors, but we could use some you know crowdfunding as well. And as of five minutes before the show started, literally, I'm not joking. Five minutes before this. So started, we start, launched our Indiegogo campaign. For the next 30 days, which we're going to try and raise, raise only $500. We're not we're not trying to whole lot get, make a whole lot of money here. But for $500, we're trying to get raised $500. So go to SOCL, S-O-C-L dot B-Z slash Indiegogo. And, you know, give a dollar. Give $3. Give $4. You know, if we can reach if we can reach 500 that's great. If we can reach 100 bucks, that's great. We need business cards. We need flyers. We need, you know, I would love to get a soundboard so I don't sound as booming. I can adjust everyone very a lot better. So, if anyone can help, it'd be wonderful. So, on with our show, Mohammed. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. So, Thanks, Mohammed, sir. what is your background? How did you get into email delivery? Sure. Uh, well, uh, actually, I was working um, earlier uh, for a uh, DSL wholesale provider called. Uh, Covite Communications, and uh, I used to uh, configure routers, uh, pretty much networking site. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the, on one fine day, uh, one of the guy from AOL actually contacted me saying that uh, they want to actually work on on email site on the anti spam. So then I pretty much started actually working over there. That was the time when, uh, uh, and this is for uh, an ISP called AOL, uh, America Online. And uh, at the time, there was no uh, anti spam team over there at the time. So oh my God. Pretty much, how, how long ago was this? It was like 1999 or 2000 or so. Uh, oh, so back, back when AOL was really, were you? Right. Getting- so, and, and they were getting so much of spam coming in from uh, pretty much all over the internet to their, uh, to their members. And they want to actually start something, you know, with, it, with the anti spam so that they can start filtering mail. Uh, I, I was involved with a pretty much like a very thin team at the time. It was like five people on the anti-spam side, and I used to work with them uh, and started actually the whole anti-spam team at AOL. Uh, and then uh, earlier, back, back in those days, we used to actually get mail, uh, receive mail with IPs that actually even have no reverse DNS, or IPs have uh, uh, a generic reverse DNS, which is called Inad or ARPA, which is like a placeholder. Uh, and uh, slowly, actually, the, 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 the filtering uh, system actually changed based on, you know, what type of mail we're getting, how, how much mail we're getting, what type of spam, spam we're getting. Then we actually get involved in setting up feedback loops uh, on AOL, and then, uh, you know, we change it to even whitelisting also because some of them, they say, well, you know what, I mean, we are not sending, we, we are actually, uh, uh, our mail actually is getting filtered out, so there should be some sort of a, Overwrite for that, and we actually said that money that we can actually you know whitelist your IP addresses. So we uh, once we actually started whitelisting IP addresses, then it was kind of a uh, once they got IPs whitelisted, it was like a free 
pass for everyone to send mail from IPs that got whitelisted. So then we said that, well, you know what? I mean, yeah, whitelist actually works well, but it seems to me some folks are actually taking uh, advantage of it and, mm -hmm. uh, and the spam, basically getting more spam. So we need to act. We need to actually make the changes on whitelisting so that we can see how how much mail we are getting per per hour, per per four hour, per twenty four hour, per seven days. So we pretty much made different bins on our end, and based on the quality of the data, uh, based on number of complaints, based on number of bounces, spam traps, then we actually give them some sort of like a, what we call as repetition score. So uh, the repetition score starts from one to nine. Uh, one is the best, nine is the worst, uh, and uh, they act actually calculate the repetition score every four hour. So now, even if, even if the IPs are whitelisted, you get some privileges of being IPs whitelisted, but still you have to take care of uh, being a being a sender. We have to take care of our mailing uh, pretty much on a four hour basis, kind of this stuff. Uh, so you were pretty much you started being the Mac cuts of AOL, pretty much. Yes, but we, only we, for email. But the email of Matt cuts. Exactly. We, we we set up the whole anti-spam team. I mean, we were actually involved in like back in those days. We used to get like a, a feedback loop forms and whitelist uh, applications through the fax. Oh my God! All right. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry because this is like 2000. I started I was just going to college, but still, 2000. If you think about it, isn't that long ago? It's yeah. What? It's. 14 years 14 ago. 14 years back. Yeah. Almost, 15, almost 15 years ago. It's not that yeah. long ago. And you were receiving stuff via fax. I'm sure because, you, didn't, you didn't have a smartphone back then. Yeah. So you still payphones. Smartphone was, it was not there. Plus, the thing is that if we want them to actually sign that, that documentation, physical sign, and there was no process at the time, so, so that we said, well, you know what? We'll actually put the form on the website, but they have to print the form, fill that, fax it to us. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh my God! And people, amazingly enough, people still fax. Yeah, I don't know and, why, and but people still fax. It's easier just to just scan the email, but you know. That 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 number is still active at AOL, and uh, I'll get You've tried it uh, from their postmaster saying that you know what? Actually, we actually get still some fax uh, fax on the uh, on the fax machine with the whitelisting forms. Oh wow. That, that's that's really a you know a blast from the past. Yeah, it's so, international, so they send it from different countries and things like that. So uh, maybe they get you know that info from somewhere, some from someone who actually used to you know take care of that uh, whitelist at the time. Yeah. So after A Weber, what, after A Weber, after you're still at A Weber, after AOL, what, where'd you go next? Uh, yeah. Well, after AOL, actually worked for another. Uh, uh, well, uh, in in the email industry, they were like. They call like two different sites. One is the ISP, which they saw, which they call as bright site, and the one they call as the ESP as the dark site. So yeah. I, so uh, it was a pretty easy transition for me to move from the uh, from the ISP to the ESP. So I work for for Ad Knowledge. Uh, it's an uh, it's an ESP, uh, a B two C ESP out of uh, Kansas. Well, so, Rufus, let's define what ESP is: email service provider. Email service provider, yes. the ones who actually can you know send mail to the ISPs pretty much. So okay. th these are senders and ISPs are receivers. Mm -hmm. So they uh, and then th they actually send pretty high volume of mail. Uh, uh, runs in you know almost like a in a multi million uh, uh, addresses almost on a daily basis. Wow. And uh, they 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 actually have quite a few clients and they send uh, they send multiple you know using lots of IP addresses. Uh, they send to different ISPs and then uh, then I was uh, I got involved over there. As they, some of the some of the info which they have was not up to date uh, as far as the ISPs are concerned. So I need to make changes to the filters. I need to make changes to uh, how much volume they can send, with how many IPs, what kind of, uh, and then I have to re pretty much build kind of a repetition system on their end so that they can actually can see how their uh, their data actually is doing while sending mail out to the internet. Oh wow. So uh, while I was doing it, it took me almost like a, they're pretty uh, active and cooperative on that one, and they build pretty much in like in next in three months or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, ECPM, which is basically is the uh, exact cost per million, uh, which uh, ESPs actually refer uh, for for the stats. So the ECPMs was like almost like 80 cents or so when I when I joined Ad Knowledge, and then uh, after that uh, after like. Within three months or so, their ECPM actually went to two dollar and ten cents. 
So uh, they they're starting with you know they're getting quite a bit of revenue and they their their mail pro problems were not there at all. Uh, uh, they still get IPs filtered out. Um, again, it's all based on the quality of the data. Uh, you know how they're getting the, the, the that that uh, the data as a single opt-in or double opt-in or no opt-in kind of a stuff. Uh, and uh, you know what type of mail they are sending it. They are sending it consistently or not. So it all depends on the, uh, you know. And then I actually ran that reputation score on uh, within within ad knowledge itself. So that based on how you are doing it on on your given IP, given list, given data, given uh, you know the customer of our, of that ESP, we actually give them some scores. So based on that score, we can actually send mail out to the to the internet. If oh, it is wow. bad, cool. If it's bad, then we'll actually reduce the volume. If it's good, then we can increase the volume. All right. So then, what did you do after that company? Like, how did you end up at A Weber? Like, well, after that, actually, I started working for another company out of uh, San Diego uh, or uh, LA, actually. Uh, for it's called uh, Global Wide Media. Uh, they are also an, an ESP. They also send quite a bit of mail to the uh, to the ISPs, and uh, I was there. Uh, as a VP of the company, and actually I was handling email as a product, uh, pretty much from the time when the customer comes in to to, uh, to pretty much that the customer's mail actually goes to the subscriber's mailbox, uh, involved in pretty much on the uh, authentication side, how many IPs we need to give, what type of reverse DNS we need to set it up, how we need to configure the headers, what kind of templates we have, and you know all nine yard kind of a stuff. Wow. Okay. Uh, the only thing is that they asked me to move to LA, and I'm a, actually Virginia based, uh, uh, and I stayed there for, in Virginia for almost like 20 years now. Where, so, where, where, where were you based? Uh, uh, this company was LA, LA based, so uh, oh, Los okay. Angeles. Uh, and they asked me to actually move over there, and uh, being a VP, I was handling, you know, I was taking care of quite a few folks over there. It's not that easy to do it from from remote, uh, so uh, I just have to you know give up the job. And then I was looking for something which I can work from home, so I got this job at uh, at Blue Hornet, uh, which is a sister company of Digital River uh, out of San Diego. Uh, and I was doing remote, uh, pretty much working from home from uh, for them too. It's an also an ESP, and again, I mean they also have the you know a little bit of less visibility of what to send, what not to send, how much to send. How many IPs we need to use? How to set up reverse DNS authentication? So pretty much all the stuff which, what ISPs looks at it, then we basically can actually change stuff on their end. Oh wow! While I was working for it, then you know someone actually contacted me from Aweber and saying that you you know you want to join here, and I said well that's that's good because I was getting a director position here and it's close to you know it's on the East Coast, so I just opted into work here at Aweber. So how long have you been at Aweber for? Like. Uh,